Alright, so this is a quick video to demonstrate a concept called filtering by Boolean mask uh, within Dynamo. We just have the sample Revit model open and a blink session of Dynamo. So whenever you're working with data, a lot of times it's nice to be able to filter it out based on what you're targeting. In this specific example, we'll be looking at filtering out rooms by their name. So looking at let's say stairs, because I know that there are several stair rooms in this Revit model. Uh, so what we can do is we'll actually go ahead and collect all the rooms in our model. So we'll navigate this first one in the library. So Revit selection, and we have a few options here. We have all elements of category. So let's go ahead and use that and the categories node. In this example, we'll go ahead and use the categories dropdown. I don't suggest this quite as much to use these days because the category can change on you between Revit versions because the category dropdown remembers the actual integer of the selected item. That's in another video that I have called Considerations for Dynamo Player. So typically, if you're using a dropdown, you really should use it when you want someone to change it. Uh, in the case of rooms, it would be better to use a category by name, double click for something like rooms. So this would be more stable and that's demonstrated in that other video as well. Uh, so if we have rooms selected in this manner, we can go ahead and find their names. Just out of simplicity, I'll right click and search for room.name. There's two, the Archilab package has its own version that acts a little bit differently, but we'll just use the first one. We'll tie room into room, and now we see that we've obtained the room name. So now, if we want to find all the room elements that have the word stare in them, we can do a containment test. So string contains to see if that word contains the word stare. Uh, what's nice about this out of the box node is it lets you ignore the case as well, which is really nice to do because if someone named it stare lowercase or stare sentence case, I want to be able to catch it. So we'll double click for a code block just to do some quick text entry. And we'll type stare, we'll do a semicolon, and we'll do true to ignore the case. And we'll see that we have a whole list of values that says false and true. This is also known as a Boolean mask. So this is a list of true and false values that we can use for other things. Uh, in the library, we'll just search for filter. And one of the first ones that will show up is an out of the box node called filter by bool mask. And the description for this says filters a sequence by looking up corresponding indices in a separate list of Booleans. Kind of a crazy description, but essentially you take one set of criteria, a list, and you filter it by some shared values. In this case, we would filter it by them containing the word stare. So that would be our mask. The actual elements that we want to filter, because I want rooms that have the word stare in them, would be the elements. Oftentimes I see people filter out the actual name of the elements and then they reuse the elements from bo before on down the line and it gets very messy because now that you filter data, it's going to be sorted different and things like that. So what we really want to do is pull up this collection section of our graph and filter the elements themselves. This is interesting because now that I have room elements, if I still wanted the room name for some reason, I see people do this a lot. They'll copy like the room name node and reuse it again. That's fine, but depending on the operation you're doing, if you're extracting geometry from the room, you're adding more processing time to your graph, which just kind of isn't great. Uh, so ideally, if you're reusing that data on down the graph, uh, you would end up filtering both of them at the same time. So we can cover that now as well. Uh, right on the surface though, this graph as it sits right now is an excellent example of filtering out rooms based on their names. So your in output would be rooms that are stairs and your out would be rooms that are not stairs. If we want to take this a step further, we can disconnect the filter by bull mass node 
and we need to do a concept called weaving the lists. So we need to match the room name and the actual room elements together with their room names. Uh, the easiest way to do this, I was showing this at AU at one of the workshops, is use a list create node to tie the list together and then you transpose this list. And what this does is we have both the list together as um, sub lists. When we transpose it, we create the list with the room and the name together. So they're weaved together to be one to one. So now these are paired with the data that they belong to. What's really great about this is I can now filter this list by that same mass that I uh, obtained once. And now I have the data filtered along with the element. This is really useful because if I like, once again, if I was using something like room geometry or a really heavy action, I just have to filter it once and then I can obtain it down the line. If I keep redoing an action on the element, it could start to bog down your graph quite a bit. So in the effort of cleaning up this graph a little bit, we will navigate and pan just to kind of organize it. I like to make sure everything's lined up as well. And we'll see that we have our data. One problem here though is the data is still grouped together. So the easiest way to handle this is to retranspose it. I'll do a control copy. And now we have two sub lists. From here you can do something like a code block. So I like to do this quite a bit where I'll double click for a code block and say rooms equals input zero. When you plug that in, we'll see that we have the room elements. And then I will expand the other data. And we'll name this room names equals input one. Now you have two outputs. So we've retransposed it back to where it was and we obtained those two pieces of uh, data as their own thing. So if I wanted to use rooms, I'll just drop a watch node for this. If I wanted to use rooms, I would use this first output. And if I wanted those names again, I would use the second output. So that's a really nice way to filter multiple sets of criteria together. If you had room name, room number, it's geometry, all sorts of different things together uh, that you're obtaining like at this point, you can combine those and transpose them, weave the list and filter it all at once as well. Uh, so there's two concepts at play here, uh, but I think they're both useful if you're, especially if you're cleaning up graphs. Uh, so there you have it. Introduction to filter by Boolean mask, and then a little extra concept of weaving the list for filtering multiple at once.